We are richly blessed as a family this morning. We are richly blessed as the church this morning. We're so thankful to have you with us as we celebrate Palm Sunday. We're going to use a little bit different text this morning. You may remember it from our daily devotional readings in the past several days or maybe in the days yet to come uh, as we have journeyed together uh, life along the way in our daily devotions and in our uh, small group and Sunday school scripture studies uh, that we're sharing together this year. But as we think about Palm Sunday, we want to take a moment this morning and think about what empowered Jesus to face and to prevail over the events of Holy Week. And in order for Jesus to stand face to face with the devil himself, to stand toe to toe with the cross of Calvary, Jesus had to live his life from a solid foundation. And what we find when we look at Jesus' life in the Gospels, we found that at the core and the center of his life was his relationship with his heavenly Father. He said, I came to do the Father's will. He told his disciples one day, after he had had the conversation with the Samaritan woman by the well, my food is to do the will of the Father, the one who sent me. I wonder this morning when we wake up to a new day and we think about what's for breakfast, do we stop and think, oh, wait a minute, my food is to do the will of the Heavenly Father. I wonder sometimes when lunchtime comes around and the stomach begins to growl, do we ask ourselves or say to ourselves, my real food is to do the will of the Father because I am in relationship with God and I want to see God's will fulfilled in every aspect of my life. That's the solid foundation that Jesus' life was built upon. And it was because he lived from a solid foundation that he was then able to face the events, the very storms of life that he faced in what we call Holy Week. Now, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, oh, it was much celebrated. But Jesus' last week between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday was brutal. Yet Jesus prevailed because his life was built upon a solid foundation. Now, Jesus gave us a quick little teaching in Luke chapter 6, and we want to look at that this morning as we think about a solid foundation. Scripture, Luke 6, verse 47 through 49, English Standard Version. Hear the words of Jesus about building a solid foundation for our lives. Everyone who comes to me and hears my word and does them, I will show you what he's like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. May God add His richest blessings to the reading of His Word. As you and I well know, a foundation is the hidden part of the house that supports the rest of the house. Like the foundation of a house, the guiding principles of God's Word are hidden in our hearts as to guide us each day as we live our lives. A much needed foundation hidden in our hearts. Now, as we put into practice the very Word of God on a daily basis, we strengthen that foundation, we grow our faith and our confidence in God's Word so that when the storms of life come our way, we have a spiritual house, a spiritual life built upon a strong, a firm, a solid foundation. As you look into God's Word, you find the promises of God, and they are the foundation stones in our hearts, in our lives, 
upon which to build our spiritual house. Now in this quick little teaching, Jesus gave us three keys to building our house on a solid foundation. Key number one was come to Jesus. He said, everyone who comes to me. I want to tell you what, I, I wonder how people survive the storms of life when they have no relationship with Jesus. Now, we've had some traumatic events come to pass this past week. We had a school shooting up in Nashville. Three children lost their lives. Three staff members lost their lives. And then the one who brought all of that evil about lost her life as well. And I wonder about those families who have suffered such a traumatic event. And I wonder if they have Jesus in their hearts and in their lives to help them weather the storm that has engulfed their lives. They didn't know what was coming Monday. Those two officers who got in a shootout Tuesday in Huntsville, one's in critical condition, one died. They didn't know what the day hold, but I wonder about their families. Who, what is carrying them through the storms of life? I want to tell you what, church, I've gone through some storms. And I can tell you this morning, Jesus brought me through every one. Can I tell you that again? I've gone through some storms. You have weathered some storms together with me and my family. And can I report to you today? Jesus Christ has brought us through every storm. He is the solid rock. He is the firm foundation. He is the one upon which we will place our hope and nothing more, nothing less than Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why we continue to come to Jesus. And I'm glad this morning we don't have to go very far to come to Jesus because He lives in our hearts and lives each and every day. So if you want to get near to Jesus, just say, Jesus. You can even say it quietly inside. Jesus, I'm here. Not just by your side, but in your heart. Jesus. Jesus is just a word away, a name away, a breath away. Whether it be your mouth or it be in your heart, be in your mind, Jesus is there. Jesus said, if you come to me and you hear my word. Now, I, I, I love to hear the word of God. And all through the week, if, if I'm traveling from place to place, I've got some kind of thing on my telephone playing, a podcast of some kind. I love to hear preachers preach. I love to hear teachers teach. I love to hear the Word of God. I love to read it. I love to study it. He said, you must come to me and you must hear my words. You must hear my words. You must let them settle down into your heart and into your mind. They must become a part of who you are. Jesus said His Word was like a seed cast abroad. And He wants it to land in the good soil of our hearts so it can sprout and grow up and produce a harvest. Sixty-fold, thirty-fold, a hundred-fold. He wants to bring a harvest into our lives from His Word. So He says, hear the Word. But you know what, church? Sometimes this is where we get stuck. We like the Word so much, we get stuck with the Word and don't progress to the doing the Word. We have our Worship services, and, and we get to hear the Word preached. And we have our Sunday school classes, and we get to hear our Word, God's Word taught. And we have our small groups, and we can slice and dice and give our own opinion about what the Word of God means. And if we really want to get serious about the Word of God, we can pull out the Greek and Hebrew and find out what it means in the original languages. And we can have committees and study teams to find the deeper meaning of the Word. We can look at the world of the text. What's going on in that moment? We can look at the world behind the text. What's going on in the greater society of the day? We can look at the world in front of the text. Our hearts and our lives and get so enthralled with the Word that we don't go to the next step and just do it. Just do it. One of the things... I loved so much about the services we had in here in February where I never got an opportunity to preach. Were you there? Yeah. Did you enjoy? Yeah. You know what was so good about those services? It's because we did the Word. 
We didn't preach it again. We did what the Word calls us to do. We came before God's throne of grace. Does the Word tell us to do that? Absolutely. We bore each other's burdens. Does the Word of God tell us to do that? Absolutely. We got down in the altar, knee beside knee, shoulder to shoulder, arms around each other, praying for healing, deliverance, restoration, restoration of relationships. Whatever was on the heart and the mind, we did the Word. And what did God do? He showed up and He blessed the doing of the Word. And hearts were healed. And relationships were mended. And sins were forgiven. And people were set free for the glory of God. Can you say amen? Sometimes we just get stuck. Sometimes it's because we're afraid or, or we're timid or, or, or maybe our faith hadn't grown to the place it needs to be. We come to Jesus and we hear the Word, we memorize the verses, but we never go put it into practice. What did the Bible say? Go and visit those that are in prison. What's David and the crew going to do on Kairos? They're going to do what the Word says to do. No wonder God blesses it so much. Because you came to Jesus. You heard the Word that says go into the prisons and visit them. And guess what? They're going with your blessing. No wonder on so many occasions they come back. The Kairos team and says, Church, we want you to know this one gave her heart to Jesus. That one gave their heart to Jesus. That one gave their heart to Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is in the business of blessing the doer of His Word. You might wonder sometimes, why isn't more taking place in my spiritual life? I came to Jesus... I heard the Word. I've memorized the verses. I've gone through 8,332 Bible studies. I've got them all on my bookshelf at home in my library. What's going on? Have you put into practice what you know? You see, the amen or oh me. And sometimes people don't want to say oh me, so they don't say nothing at all. And I have to turn this around on myself. I'm not pointing at you because if I point at you, i got three fingers pointing right back at me. And I just kind of thought about this practically speaking this last week. And I thought, you know, when somebody in my family is sick, what's the first thing that I do? Do I run to the medicine cabinet? Do I run them down to the doctor? Or do I pray? The Bible tells us the first thing you do is pray. Mark chapter 16, lay hands on the sick and the shall recover. Is that the Word of God? Are you laying your hands on your children when they're sick? Are you praying over them that God may heal them? Now, I'm so glad God works through doctors and medicine. I thank God for the ability and the gifting God has given. But at the same time, did we pray first? Or did we say, well, when all else fails, I guess we'll pray now. There's nothing else we can do. Well, that's where we need to start. God will give you guidance whether or not you need to go to the doctor. And I'm not telling you not to go, but I'm asking you, have you prayed for your children, for your spouse, for your friend when they're sick? I want to tell you what, I've made people feel uncomfortable in the past. I was in a store somewhere one day and somebody came up to me and said, hey, I need you to pray about this. I need you to pray for me. And I said, hey, sounds good to me. Let's pray. And I grabbed their hand right there in Walmart and started to pray. And you should have seen the look on their face. And you said, Pastor Ricky, you're not supposed to be peeking while you pray. Well, I kept my eyes open because I didn't want to draw attention to myself or to the situation. We just needed to pray, and we did. We just standing there looking at each other like we're in conversation. And we invited a third person to be a part of the conversation. His name was Jesus. And we began to pray and invite him into that moment, into that situation, right there at Walmart. Oh my God, you know what? Jesus went out into the community and did ministry. We try to bring all the ministry to the church. Have we not read the Word? We're supposed to be out in the community praying for people, sharing the Word of God with people, being the light of the, light of the world, being the salt of the earth. Why? Because that's what the Word says to do. It's simple. It's simple. Come to Jesus. Hear the word and do the word. 
And when you do, oh my goodness, you're going to build your spiritual house on a solid foundation upon the which the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Does not say the gates of hell will not come against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. You, you, just, you just need to go ahead and, and, and get your mind cleared up. If you think for a moment that as a child of God, the enemy is not going to come against you, you're wrong. If you think for a moment that trouble's not going to come your way, you're wrong. Did trouble come Jesus' way? Yes, it did. Over and over and over. I mean, when he was a baby, Herod tried to have him killed. Now, I don't know about you, but nobody was trying to take me out when I was less than two years old. I mean, I might have gave my mom a fits and she might have wanted to pinch my head off, but I'm here. You know, every once in a while, you do want to put them back where they came from. Just every once in a while. But do not be deceived, church. There will be occasions and seasons in your life that all hell will come against you. The question is whether or not you will prevail over hell. The question is whether or not you will prevail over the God, the spirit of this world that is behind the hell that comes your way. It may be sickness, it may be relationship issues, it may be financial issues, it may be a lot of things all at one time. You ever had that perfect storm where everything in life seemed to be falling apart around you? Everything you put confidence in suddenly is falling by the wayside. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? You're going to find out that the only place you can put confidence and trust is in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And God allows these things to happen to let us know we cannot put our faith and trust in anything that is not Him. Are you with me? Because when the storm has come and the storm has gone, you will still be standing if your spiritual life is founded upon a solid foundation and His name is Jesus. His name is is Jesus. How in the world did Jesus make it through Holy Week? Think about it. He knew what was coming. I, do, you, do you wonder sometimes, is it better to know what's coming or not? If you were going to die this Friday, would you like to know today that you were going to die Friday? Or do you just want to let it catch you off guard? Sometimes we think, well, if I knew I was going to die Friday, then I could get some things done that need to be done before I die. And then my question would be to you, why aren't you doing those things already? If there's things that are undone, why aren't you taking care of those things right now? Or maybe you didn't know it was coming and you didn't have to worry about it. It just happened. Jesus knew what was coming. Can you imagine the, the weight on him mentally and emotionally about what was coming down the pike for him that week? And then can you imagine as he sat there with his disciples knowing that one of them would betray him and knowing that all of them would abandon him? Can you think about that night when he was betrayed and he was abandoned? All of his so-called friends and disciples scattering like scared mice. Can you think for a moment when the Roman soldiers came and, and, or the temple soldiers came to, to take him away and they arrested him there and they cast him into prison and they tried him with an unlawful trial and they found an innocent man guilty and they took him and scourged him. Sometimes scourging was such a brutal beating that people didn't live through the scourging to be crucified. But he lived because they couldn't take his life. He could only lay down his life because he's the king of kings and the lord of lords and he's the lord of life so they hung him upon the cross of calvary suspended between heaven and earth and there he laid down his life for you and i that he might take it up again on resurrection morning but i just want to clue you in on the one of the things that that cemented 
that solid foundation of Jesus Christ together that empowered him to live through this week in such a prevailing fashion. And that was his prayer life. I want to encourage you this morning, when you come to Jesus, come to Jesus prayerfully. And when you open up the Word and you hear the Word, hear that Word with prayer. And then when you get up from the Word, go forward in prayer, empowered by prayer to do the Word of God. Jesus' prayer life is written about in the Gospels from start to finish. Jesus got up early in the morning and he prayed. Jesus prayed all night. Jesus prayed in public. Jesus prayed in private. Jesus prayed with uh, uh, Peter, James, and John. Jesus could be talking to somebody and he would just start praying to his father. When Jesus stood before Lazarus' tomb, he began to pray in front of all of them. Father, I know you hear me, but Father, I want them to hear me that they might believe that you sent me. Lazarus, come forth. And the dead got up and walked out of the tomb. Jesus also prayed on that day that he laid down his life for you and I. The night before, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. While hanging on the cross, he prayed to the Father for his executioners. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. While he hung on the cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And there, at the last moment, with his last breaths, he prayed, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Oh my goodness, church. Oh my goodness, church. Jesus trusted his heart, his life, all that he was, all that he is to the Father. To the Father. It reminds me of something that Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. If you want a firm foundation in life, come to Jesus. Hear the Word. Do the Word. And in doing so, build your relationship with the Father. And it does not matter what storm comes your way, you will prevail through Jesus Christ our Lord.